Hello, yours. I, I heard something about this Ethereum thing. Is that still all around? Uh, yeah, Joel. We, we were just uh, talking with each other an hour ago, and after we finished our conversation, the release of the 1.01 Go Ethereum client was uh, was announced. So uh, we decided to get back in our microphones and uh, give you a quick update of what that uh, what it involves. First of all, this, they use this word thawing. What does it actually mean? I'm not a native speaker. Um, it's sort of like when it's winter and everything is frozen and then there's some sun shining and it just sort of starts to melt and um, can be used more broadly or to like a specific item that is sort of thawed out from, from being covered with ice and snow. Yeah. So I think that's what we're seeing in the image here. It's like... It's like uh, it was like covered in an ice crystal, and now it's emerging. So what that probably refers to, if we look at the, the network statistics, yeah. um, we've seen that all the miners have been mining. Uh, we are at block thirty-eight thousand nine hundred seventy-three, uh, but but there's no there's no transactions going on, mm -hmm. uh, not yet. So this is because the the one point zero release they had hard well kind of hard coded the the gas limits. Uh, that mm -hmm. the miners would include in a, in a block to mm -hmm. be something like 500 gas. So this was uh, much less than the minimum required to uh, to send a single uh, transaction in mm -hmm. uh, in a block. So basically, this means that the blocks were or the, the miners were just not including any transactions at all. They were just mining empty empty blocks. Um, now they're going to unfreeze this and uh, slowly over time, especially if these. Uh, Miners are going to update their their Go client or their their uh, C++ clients. Uh, the, the the gas limit will uh, increase, and at some point, uh, maybe in a couple of hours, or if we're a bit pessimistic, in in a, in a day or two, uh, people can actually start sending uh, transactions to the network and create their contracts and and start working on their on their apps. Well, that sounds pretty exciting. Uh, so, so far, I mean, we're just one hour into the release. Pretty much everybody is still running the 1.0.0 client, uh, but you've seen a couple of crazy people have already updated. So uh, maybe this is going uh, going very fast. So there are a couple interesting changes in this uh, in this release as well. Uh, yeah, first of all, the the start of the the thawing uh, process. Uh, so they're setting the target gas limit. To a to a three million something, so a pi three one four one five nine two uh, guess. Mm -hmm. This will not be done instantly, but the miners will be slowly increasing the gas limit until that uh, until that target is is met. Uh, again, it can take a couple a couple hours. Um, also, the gas price is 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 reduced to like fifty shannon. Um, I think it was ten zabo. Before mm. wasn't mm -hmm. it? I think that's right. I, I'm I'm not sure how, how good you are in, in converting all these all these numbers, uh, but I think it went went down quite drastically. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm interesting what the, the impact of that will be in the number of uh, spam contracts and uh, things that we'll be seeing on the on the blockchain. The second part is the the difficulty adjust scheme. Um, have you heard anything about this this difficulty bomb? Is that the POS? Change? Yeah, yeah, su supposedly, exactly. right? So at some so. point, they want to switch over from the proof of work to a proof of stake uh, a consensus algorithm. And at that point, I think they just want to inflate the difficulty of the old chain to make it yeah. impossible to mine anymore. Yeah, it's almost like they have a programmed in hard fork from the beginning. I, I didn't see a contract for this though, so it's a bit of a mystery how this actually works. I, I briefly went through the through the file changes, but uh, just just looking at the code, I couldn't quite figure out how this works. But apparently, there will be some kind of blog post upcoming that will explain us in detail how this is going to uh, how mm -hmm. this is going to work out. So, is the time of that actually programmed in, or how is that triggered? I I, I think there's something with uh, with a relative time. Uh, in there, uh, but I didn't see any kind of hard-coded value, so it might just be mm -hmm. some kind of exponential increase over time. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, they need to be able to meet their deadlines if they can uh, release the proof of stake in, in time. So, um, yeah. really looking forward to the explanation of uh, of that. The third fix more was like the mining transaction sorting. Right, I'm not sure what the old behavior was, but right now they want to make sure that uh, 
uh, that based on uh, on a higher gas price and uh, a higher nonce uh, transactions will be included. You can you can overwrite your previous transactions by setting a higher gas price than than before if the old ones don't go uh, don't go through. That makes sense. Oh, and this is interesting. The community chosen Genesis block is there. Mm -hmm. So during the release of uh, 1.0, everybody had to generate their own Genesis block out of the Ether sale results from the mm. Bitcoin blockchain. Yep. Um, now actually the, the result of that is included in the client by default. So uh, mm. whatever was the most uh, common use block, I, I didn't see anybody else using a different, different one. Um, I think people could could have tried to be clever and ex try to exclude some counts from the Genesis block, but I think just everybody stick with the default one. So that's the one that's being included in here. Um, what was the process for including your provided Genesis block? Um, so it was using the the hash of a certain block from the testnet. Mm -hmm. uh, so that put some kind of timer and some kind of random arbitrary random number from the from the Ethereum testnet mm -hmm. uh, that was used and besides that it was using all the it was actually connecting to the to the blockchain net the Bitcoin blockchain network and seeing all the the people that bought their ether um, and including the amount of ether that they bought by extracting that information from the relevant blockchain uh, the relevant Bitcoin blockchain transaction and including that into the into the Genesis file. I actually think I have a, I have a copy of the of the file. There we go. So that's what the Genesis block looks like. Yeah, so this is the Genesis block in, uh, in JSON format. So it's including for every account number the the balance in in, in Y that they uh, that they acquired. Mm -hmm. um, and at the end of it uh, quite a couple of accounts there is the the hash of the of the testnet transaction that is uh, that is in there. Do you remember a long time ago we bought some ether as well in the in the pre-sale? Shall we look up if it's uh, if it's on the list? Yeah, sure. Uh, that sounds like a good idea. Okay. Do you do you still remember the hash? Uh, not off the top of my head, no, unfortunately. Let, let me let me look it up. This was the this was the address that we uh, that we used, and we bought uh, forty two ether. Um, I also just got it confirmed to the EtherChain website. So when I search for the for the address that we uh, got through the pre-sale, we see that we actually got uh, 42 Ether, and it's uh, it's right there in the in the Genesis block. That's pretty exciting. I'm I'm looking forward to actually using I guess, this. I, I guess that means we're going to be rich, right? Well, we we have to see what this uh, translates to, like how many Dodge coin this will give us. Yeah, maybe it's enough to create a um, contract that has a lot of Doge Ether in it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 let's do that next. Uh, so besides this, a couple of minor fixes, crashes being fixed, some lock entry in the JSON RPC uh, API, uh, supporting the latest Go client, and some other fixes for uh, RPC calls. Yeah, looking forward to everybody updating their, their node to the, especially the minus, to 1.01. .01. And uh, maybe in a day from now, see the actual transactions uh, coming in. So what do we need? We need every person to update to that. Is that right? It, it's, a, it's a voting process. So all yeah. the miners that are updating, they will be voting for increasing the, the block size. And everybody that hasn't done that yet, they will be voting for decreasing. So at mm -hmm. some point, the majority will be voting for increasing. Uh, and then it just takes uh, a while for, uh, for the amount to be updated. How long? Mm -hmm. I think like the optimistic estimation was six hours, but um, that's like if everybody's going to update right now. So once more than 50% have taken all these updates, then it'll take about six hours to actually go into effect. I, I'm not sure. Probably if everybody has updated, they, it will take six hours. If, if less than 100% is updated, it will just take more time. I see. Well, I can't wait to uh, make a smart contract here that actually does something. Yeah. Welcome to the Ethereum Spring.